In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, and welcome to the Shrine and Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins, and we ask God's mercy and forgiveness. In all humility, all together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. To my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault, though I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, that is solved to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered by his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Jeremiah's oracle is about the Messiah who will rise from the house of David. This is fulfilled in Jesus, who is descended from David according to the flesh and the Son of God, who by virtue of his resurrection will establish justice. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe, and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, to you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and for you I wait all the day. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Paul teaches us the right attitude 
to prepare for the Lord's coming, living a life of uprightness and of love for one another. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before God our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that, as you, as you receive from us, how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, Alleluia. Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and in the earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heaven will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from cursing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that they catch you by surprise like a trap, for that they will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times, and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Tayo po ngayon ay nasa unang linggo ng panahon ng Adbento. Ang panahon ng Adbento ay paghahanda para sa pagdating ng ating Panginoon. At uh, bilang bahagi ng paghahanda na yan ay uh, pakikinggan natin ng sangliham pastoral na pinapabasa sa lahat ng misa, sa lahat ng simbahan dito sa Archdiocese ng Lingayan Dagupan. Ang pamagat ay paglaban sa kasamaan ng vote buying. Mga minamahal na makapatid, tayo po ay nasa unang araw ng bagong panahon sa kalendaryo ng Simbahang Katolika. Advent, ang panahon ng ating paghahanda sa sarili para sa panibagong panimula na inihandog ng muling pagdating ng ating Panginoon sa ating mga buhay. Kapag may paghahanda, kailang bigyang atensyon ang pagkakaroon ng isang makabuluhang direksyon para sa ating buhay. Sa nabasa nating Ibanghelyo, isang malaking paanyaya mula kay Jesus na tayo sana ay palagi maging handa sa kanyang muling pagbalik sa mundong ito. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from cursing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life and that they catch you by surprise like a trap. Ang pagiging handa sa kanyang pagbabalik ay kaugnay ng ating pagbibigay halaga sa pamumuhay, hindi lang sa ating mga sarili, kasama na ang ating pakikipag-ugnayan sa kapwa at lalo higit ang ating pagkalinga sa ating minamahal na bayan. Lalo na ngayong sa nalalapit na eleksyon, napakahalaga ng ating magiging partisipasyon dito. Baka tayo magpapadala na naman sa nakakalasing na mga 
pagkakabalisa o anxieties ng pang-araw-araw na buhay at hindi naman natin isipin ang mga consequences ng ating mga ginagawa. At sa pagkabigla, magulat na naman tayo na naloko na naman sa pangakong palaging napapako. Ano bang dapat natin gawin at pakatandaan sa nalalapit na eleksyon? Ang pangunahing backbone ng demokrasya ay eleksyon. Sino mang may gustong umupo sa posisyon sa gobyerno ay may pantay na karapatan sa eleksyon. Pero ang backbone na ito ng ating demokrasya ay nilalaman ng kamandag ng tawag ay vote buying. Sino mang gustong tumakbo sa pagiging mayor ay nangailangan ng milyong-milyong piso. Higit patiyak kung tatakbo kang pagkagobernor, senador o pangulo. Tila nagiging playground na ang mga, ng mga mayayaman at malalakas ang ating eleksyon. Parang loto o, kas o kasino. More money, more chances of winning. Ang bulero at sikat ang pinapalakpakan. Yung nagbabalato ng nakukurakot, yun ang paboritong makakaselti. Naging hanap buhay na ang politika. Naging negosyo na ang politika. Paano nila babawiin ang naipusta nila sa sugal ng eleksyon? Ang paya nila at buho ng kailangan nilang bawiin kapag nasa posisyon na sila. Kaya, kailangan nilang tiyakin na pamilya lamang nila ang papalit sa kanila para hindi na lumabas ang swerte ng politika. Gaano ba kalaki ang sweldo ng opisyal ng gobyerno para yumaman pakatapos ng tatlong taon? Ang halaga ng tao ay galing sa Diyos. Marka ng Diyos ang bawat tao. Kamuka ng Diyos ang bawat tao. Mahal ng Diyos ang tao. Dililigtas ng Diyos ang tao. Ngunit, marka ng demonyo ang vote buying. Pinipresyuhan ng vote buyer ang pagkatao ng butante. Mas grabe ang vote buyer kasi marka ng demonyo kapag pinipresyuhan at pinutukso ay ang mahihirap. Kapag ang mahirap na walang makakain, walang trabaho o may sakit, ay humingi ng tulong. Ang totoong tao ay tutulong. Ngunit, hindi lagi nangyayari ito. Sa panahon ng eleksyon, ang mahirap ay para bang isdang naghanap ng pagkain pero imbis pa kainin ay pain ng bulate na nakasabit sa singkaw ng bingwit ang sinusubo ng vote buyer. Kung napakain na, binibingwit naman. Marka ng demonyo ang vote buying. Hinagahasa ng vote buyer ang sikmurang nagugutong. Ginigisa ang mga mahirap sa sarili nilang mantika. At may grand party ang nanalo sa eleksyon sa loob ng tatlong taon habang nasa posisyon. Ang nakaw na rekalo ay gigisa sa mantika ng dugo at pawis ng mga dukha. The price of corruption is being paid by the poor. Ito ang sabi ni Pope Francis. Ano mang gawin natin sa dukha ay kay Jesus natin ginagawa. Ang boto ay damal. Kapag malaya ang desisyon sa pagboto, ang damal ay nagiging dasal sa Diyos. Kapag pinagsamantala natin ang damal ng boto at pinipresyohan, ang politiko ay nagiging Diyos-Diyosan. At ang butante ay sumasamba bilang mga tagahanga. Mas mababa pa sa mga tagahanga. May marka ng demonyo ang vote buying. Kasalanan sa Diyos. May marka traidor sa bayan ang vote buying. Kasalanan sa bayan. Kung ang malaya at matalinong pagboto ang backbone ng eleksyon, ang vote buying ay parang pagdebon ng bangus. Kapag boneless na ang bangus, hindi na pwede pang lumaki, lupaypay. 
lulupaypay ang demokrasya kapag hindi natin pupulbusin ang vote buying. Kung gusto natin ng bagong panimula para sa isang makabuluhang pamumuhay, dapat tayo magsimula, mag-isip at bumoto sa tamang paraan. Palaala ng Diyos sa unang linggo ng panahon ng Adviento. Maging mapaghanda sa lahat ng panahon. Manalangin na tayong lahat ay bigyan ng lakas na makatakas sa kapigatian ng nalalapit at tumayo sa panindigan. Si Kristo na muling magbabalik para bigyan tayo ng bagong pag-asa sa mundong ito. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of God. Ito po yung nilalaman ng liham na dapat nating pagnilayan. Kasi ang sinasabi na naman sa atin ng simbahan, laging gumawa ng tama at iwasan ang mali. Simple na naman sana eh. Laging gumawa ng tama at iwasan ang masama. Ang pagbibili o pagbibenta ng boto, likas na masama. Ito'y palaala sa ating mga kalot katoliko. Sana gumawa tayo lang ng laki ng mabuti. Gawin natin lagi ang tama. Sana ang ating isip, ang ating salita, at ating magawa ay laging pagharian ng kabutihan. Sitayo po tayo. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. To Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, was spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us draw near to the heart of our Heavenly Father that in the season of Advent we may awaken from our unfaithfulness and neglect. With hearts full of trust, we pray. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the Church may tirelessly encourage and empower the flock entrusted to them in their faithfulness, witnessing to the Gospel values, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That government officials and those who are in public office may devotedly protect the sacredness of life and the dignity of all human persons, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our country and our people may rise above the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic and be given the grace of healing, protection, and confidence to continue living in hope, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us gathered today may be one mind and heart in helping our needy brothers and sisters, those who are at least last and lost in our community, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our departed brothers and sisters may rest in God's dwelling place and be given the promises of the resurrection, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, listen to the prayers of your people. May the coming of Christ find us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and untiring in love. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, we pray, you, Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And then may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the price of eternal redemption. To Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfill the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope. Socrates, our Archbishop, Fidelis, his Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Now in loving confidence, we pray to our Father in the words Christ taught us.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Do not look on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity. In accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Please kneel. Here is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
will now pray the credo of stewardship. I believe in the God of love, the owner of everything who possesses everyone. I believe in the God of mercy, who has chosen me to be a steward of Mother Nature and Mother Church, in spite of who I am and what I have done, and in spite of the infidelities He knows I will still commit. I believe in the power of giving and in the power of loving like Jesus, because love is the only way to holiness. Giving is the best proof of loving, and perfect renunciation leads to unlimited fruitfulness. I believe that in freely giving my time, in humbly sharing my talents, and in generously sacrificing my treasures, the Lord will always provide. He will take care of my needs and bless me with infinite reward on the earth and in heaven. I will be the first to give. I will not wait for the others. I will keep on giving even if others do not give. I will not be afraid to have none. I believe that the best time to share is now, not tomorrow, for tomorrow is an excuse of the greedy. I will keep my needs and wants simple and few, for I believe that in reducing my selfishness, I will grow in happiness and holiness. I am a steward of the Lord. I will return all this to Him with abundant yield. Much is asked of me because much has been given to me. I praise the Lord for His kindness to me, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May this mystery, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what really endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo at pakikiisa sa banal na misa. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration of the Mass is ended. Go to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Prayer for the blessing of the sick. Pagdasal po natin ang mga may sakit, ating mga sarili, ang mga mahal natin sa buhay, ang mga nasa ospital, ang mga nasa tahanan, at ang mga taong humingi ng ating mga dasal. Alalahan po natin sila sa panalangin na ito. Prayer for the blessing of the sick. God our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all sickness and restore them to good health. Through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for the blessing of religious articles. Yung may mga pabendisyonan po, mangyari po lamang na pakitaas mo ng mga pabendisyonan ninyo, tandaan na ito ay nais ninyong mabendisyonan. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ and Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries, candles, images, oil, scapulars, crucifixes, prayer books, and other articles of devotion be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.